Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried. He cried out all the way more. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer. Rise, he, Jesus, is calling you. Amen. As I walked in, what I heard Pastor Joe share is about an appointed time. And the title of my sermon today is Sensitive to Seasons. Everyone say, Sensitive to Seasons. The story is said of a blind man whose name is Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is not his name. Timaeus is the name of his father. Bar just means son. He did not have an identity of his own. He was known by the name of his father, Timaeus. Timaeus means owner. This blind man, if he had any identity, if anybody knew him, if he was ever introduced by someone, it was all under his daddy's name. From the moment he was born, I could just introduce him in three words. He was blind. He was a burden, and and, and uh, uh, he was he was born blind, and all his life he was a burden, and all he needed was the help of someone else to move around. Think of somebody who was born and raised in this manner. Never felt an identity in life. Never thought that he was important enough. Never had an independent life. Never had any hope for the future. I just want to tell you his daddy by whose name he was known to this day. But today in this chapter he's finding a new father and his name is Jesus and from this day on he is going to be called by a new name you are not the son of Timaeus anymore you are going to be a child of God yeah. amen why did I say seize your seasons maybe there is a sensitivity of the spirit here in the church seize your seasons lesson number one is this quickly Seize your opportunity. Seize your opportunity. Never miss an opportunity. I always say this, Jerry and Jensi could watch for me more than anyone else here. Never miss an opportunity to do something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Been a pastor all these years. I've seen people postponing things, saying maybe when I get better I'm going to do something for the Lord. After I retire, I'm going to do something for the Lord. After I finish my college, I'm going to do something for the Lord. When I have enough money in the bank, I'm going to do something for the Lord. But the story of Bartimaeus tells us, never miss an opportunity. Why so? The scripture says, just in this chapter, Jesus made a passion prediction. What is the passion prediction? Jesus said, this is what is going to happen to me. I am going to walk into my destiny. Born in Nazareth, he ended his life in Jerusalem. That was the destiny of Jesus. You just have a couple more days before I go to Jerusalem. When I go to Jerusalem, him. People are not going to come with a bouquet. They are going to take hold of me. They are going to arrest me. They are going to beat me up. And I am going to go on the cross of Calvary. That is what is going to happen to me. What does that mean for you, Bartimaeus? This is your first opportunity and this is your last opportunity. 
Amen. This is your first opportunity and this is your last opportunity. Why the first opportunity? You have never met Jesus before. You have only heard of him. Today, for the first time, you are going to meet Jesus. Don't miss that opportunity. Why it is the last opportunity? If you miss this opportunity, you are not going to get a touch of Jesus anymore. Anymore. You are not going to get a miracle from Jesus anymore. You will miss it all totally together. That is why I say when God calls us, when God gives us an opportunity, never miss it. Grab hold of the opportunity that God gives. Amen. Praise God. How would someone make the opportunity available? Or make use of the opportunity. This is very simple. We live in a culture and a time. That people always. People think that they are entitled. Entitled. People who complain more than compliment. Amen. We have a complaint about everything. If my family was right I would have done something. If my education was better, I would have done something. If my financial status was good enough, I would have done something. We always complain about the things that we don't have. But Bartimaeus is teaching me a wonderful lesson. Bartimaeus, your main problem is that you cannot see. But there is another faculty of yours that works properly well. That is the ability to hear. Amen. You cannot see that Jesus is here. But you can hear that Jesus is here. Thank God for us. To whom God has given both the abilities. One is we can see the goodness of the Lord with our own eyes. Secondly, we've been hearing all our life. With the years that God has given. I remember the household I was born and raised. We didn't have any other entertainment. Except prayer and singing at home. That is the only entertainment. Believe me. I'm not saying that I'm holier than thou. That is not what I'm trying to say. No other entertainment. Growing up all what I heard was... Either preaching or singing or praying. And today I thank the Lord for all that investment that has come to my life. All through the years I heard my God is a great God. That my God is a loving God. That my God is a prayer answering God. That my God is a miracle working God. I have heard enough in my ears to trust the Lord. No matter what the condition of my life is. I've heard enough. And today I want to say that I trust in the name of the Lord have you heard something about Jesus how long have you heard about Jesus how many times have you heard about Jesus you may not see as Bartimaeus. You don't see a sign. You don't see a symptom. You don't see the situation changing. But today I want to say the Christian faith is unique because we believe not by what we see but what we hear and what we believe in our heart. Hallelujah. And second is lesson and third I will say in two, three minutes and conclude. Sense your real need. One is seize your opportunity. Secondly, sense your real need. There are testimonies that I would want to say. If I can do that quickly. As Pastor Joe said, there are situations that the Lord would orchestrate in your lives. When you go through a situation, I think, I, I wish I could be more open enough here. I know some of the situations that all of us, young or old, go through at times. Unexpected turn of events in life. People unexpectedly becoming sick. Or a friend leaving you for no reason. 
a brokenness in life. A, 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 a disappointment even to the point of a depression that happens. I don't know what are the situations that we go through unexpectedly. But as Pastor Joe said, I want to remind you, if you are a child of God, every single thing that happens in your life is orchestrated by God and for a purpose. In college, my only desire was to get a degree and support my family. My brother quit his education after the 12th grade to work and support me and my younger sister. I went to college and thankfully did so well in college. Right by finishing the college, I was sure to get one of the 12 admissions in the university for one of the best professional degrees. But at that time, we had something called study leave. Here in America, we don't have that. Study leave is when you have to go home for a month. There you study and come back for your final exams. It is also a time when it is extremely hot in, 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 in the season. They just wanted to go. People get uh, chicken pox and all those communicable diseases. I didn't have an opportunity to go home because I did not have money to buy my ticket. I just stayed in the dorm, in the hostel, by myself and just few friends around me. And my friends started getting chicken pox. If fear crept into my heart, Lord, if I miss these finals, then I will have to study or wait another year to finish my college. So I was in a place where I couldn't go out, I couldn't play sports, I couldn't walk around. I was so confined to my room. It was so orchestrated by God, I believe, I opened my Bible. I used to wake up early morning. I would pray and say, Lord, tell me what you want out of my life. It was in one of those early morning hours, four o'clock in the morning, that the Lord gave me a word from book of Isaiah chapter 6 whom shall I send who will go for me few faces came to my mind one is my parents who struggled their whole life to support and take care of us I'm like Lord I want to get a job I want to make money I want to support my family another face that came to my mind was my brother he sacrificed for me Lord, I want to take care of him. Another face that came to my mind was my little sister that I took to college with me. Lord, I have to get her married. I have to take care of her. But there, there was no prophet, no pastor, no dad, no mom. All by myself in the dorm. The call of God and the word was so heavy. Without asking anybody, I said, here am I, Lord. I want to serve you. You know what was that opportunity? God purposely, I believe, for my sake, orchestrated that opportunity. If I missed that opportunity, I wouldn't be here today preaching the word of God. Amen. Today I feel like uh, I am the most blessed, most fortunate person on the face of the earth because the call of God came upon my life. Amen. Amen. When you hear pastors preach, when you hear prophets prophesy, when you hear somebody talk about mission, when you hear someone saying that you should be used for God, you do something to serve the church and God and God's kingdom. Never miss that opportunity. Once you miss that opportunity, you may not get it again. Seize your opportunity. Sometimes it can be your first opportunity. Sometimes it can be your last Opportunity. Madhuri matro na gai boki ke. Sandosholo re sotram varde. Since your real need, this guy said, "What do you want?" I think this problem started back then, Pastor Jos. Some people don't like when people make noise and worship the Lord. I thought it started recently. No, it started a long time ago. Huh? Some people don't like it. Brother, you are in a wrong place. This is a Pentecostal church. 
Here people shout praises to God. Amen. This is where we rejoice in the presence of God. In 2000, when I came, there was a song that everyone used to sing. When they asked me what I do, I am, oh, I don't even remember those words, man. This is how I, something like that, never mind. I'll find it next week. Huh? When they asked me what you are doing in church, I would say, this is how I honor my king. That's the meaning of the song. Amen. All through the scripture, when you have a real need, you cry out to God. All through the scripture, when you are happy in God's presence, you shout praises to God. There is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. What is your need? Bartimaeus, man, Jesus is standing in front of you. You ask anything you want, brother. Anything you want, he can. But Martimai said, come here, young man. You come here, come here, come here, come here, buddy, come here. Next week also you said, same place, all right? Yeah. This guy, he could have asked anything. Lord, I never had honor in my life. Always known under someone else's name. Uh -huh. I never had dignity. Make me somebody in the society, Lord. No. He said, now I am near you, Jesus. And I can sense that presence. Just open my eyes so that I can see your beauty. That's all I need. Oftentimes, we don't have what we need because we ask wrong questions. We ask for more than what we need. James says, you don't have much because you ask wrong things. Amen. Hallelujah. It is not money sometimes what we need. It is not fame what we need. It is not position what we need. What we really need is that our inner eyes must be open so that we can see Jesus. That is the need of the church. That we need to see Jesus. Can I, can I make a comparison here? Can I make a comparison? Few verses preceding to this portion. There were two boys there. I talked about them last week. James and they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, we want you to do something for us. Entitled. Huh? What is it? When you come in the kingdom... You said you are going to die. When you come in the kingdom, or when you become the president of this country, I want to sit on the left, and my bro want to sit on the... Me and my bro, we have to be together all the time. Oh, yeah. Huh? That question was for significance. Amen? That need was for significance. But this need is for sight. Amen. See the difference? You know, we don't do something unless we have significance. Where is my phone? All right. Give me your phone. If it is today, right? I'm seeing Jesus, the most popular guy in the town. I'm meeting him. Take. I don't know, I don't know the passcode. He won't give me. It's no yeah. Take a selfie, FB, Instagram, YouTube, thousand hit. You miss the mark, brother. You miss the point. You miss the real need. Your near need is not significance. Your real need is not popularity. Your real need is not a title. Your near, your need is not money. Your near need is not another house. Your near need is that the eyes of your heart should be opened so that you can see Jesus. Hallelujah. That is the real need. Hallelujah. You all right? Stand there. Amen. I pray that in these days where people crave for significance, for importance, for position, for title, for, for, for all of that. I pray that the church will pray to Jesus. That is not what we need. We want to see you, Jesus. Open the eyes of our understanding. God bless you, okay? 
I should stop here. The last lesson would be believe in the power of Jesus. Savior's power in time of need. Everyone say Savior's power in time of need. When he asked the right question, in the midst of the crowd, oh man, can you think of this? What is going through the mind of Jesus? I'm going to Jerusalem. None of these guys, 12 of them, make 11, walk with me. He's going to be with me. They're going to depart me. They're going to leave me. And one of those guys is even going to betray me. That is what is going to happen. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to bleed. I'm going to be really disappointed. And the sin of the whole world is going to come on me. Oh, this is what, it's going to be a dark night. It is going to be the most difficult moment of my life. Even then, when Bartimaeus asked the right question, Jesus said, call him, call him, call him, call him, call him. Call him, call him, call him, call him. When you ask the right question, I believe, even today, Jesus will say, call him, call him, call him. Send an angel to that household. They are praying the right prayer. Ah, there's a need in that family. There's a need in the life of that young man. Oh, call an angel and send him to that household. They need a healing. They need a deliverance. They need a touch. Don't miss the opportunity. Savior is in this house. Amen. Amen. Jesus is by our side. He's near. Everyone closing our eyes.